for you to share your experiences with trying to um, establish an LGBT friendly mosque in, I believe, Ohio, you said, and, um, you know, it didn't go well. What do you like? Can you tell us that story? Uh, well, when I decided to be a Muslim, in addition to being a Sufi, yeah, um, uh, I, for, for several years, I did the prayers and did all the rituals and that kind of thing, uh, did the fast, everything. Um, that no longer seems terribly important to me, but it did. It did. It did it at the moment. Uh, I went to mosque. You know, the first mosque I went to uh, was uh, Somali immigrants, and I was the the only American person in the mosque. And I think they all thought I was probably FBI. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I found I found an American an, an African American uh, mosque. The followers of W.D. Muhammad, the offshoot of Nation of Islam, a very rational offset of Nation of Islam, uh, and I was fairly comfortable there. Uh, men and women were separated. Uh, I didn't like that very much, but oh well. Uh, and then one day, the mom uh, made some mocking remarks, mocking remarks about homosexuals, about LGBTs. And I just walked out. Uh, both my daughters are gay. Uh, and I'm half gay. Uh, I fell in love uh, with a young man when I was in my 20s. Uh, of course, this was back in the 1960s when, before the revolution. I was embarrassed by it. I never told anybody. I never told him. You know, but I was madly in love with him. Uh, I, I, I later married. Uh, uh, and was married to my first wife for 22 years, raising my my two sons. And uh, several times I fell in love with other young men during that time. And again, I was embarrassed by it, and I never never acted on it. Uh, when I when when that marriage broke up, uh, I decided to to find a boyfriend instead of a girlfriend. Uh, and I was interviewing. Uh, and then I met Jean and fell in love with her. Uh, and for the last 32 years, I've been more blissfully happy than I ever imagined was possible. And, and I'm, you know, you were totally loyal to one another. Neither one of us would think about having any kind of dalliance. But I see, I see attractive men and I find them attractive. You know, I think about those things, you know. Uh, so, so I know that about myself. And at this point in my life, I'm very comfortable with that. You know, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not bothered by it. It's just who I am. And I, I think the, ostrac the ostracizing people for feeling the things they feel is a terrible, terrible, terrible injustice. And I just couldn't tolerate it. Uh, I did a web search. I came across MPV, Muslims for Progressive Values. Uh, this would have been uh, 2011 or 12. Uh, in 2012, I attended uh, their national conference in New York. Uh, it wasn't a big deal. It was, you know, 20, 30 people maybe. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, call to prayer was recited by a woman. Uh, we lined up for prayer, uh, men and women, gay and straight. It uh, didn't matter who sat, who stood where. Uh, the chuppah was delivered by a man, but it could have easily been delivered by a woman in that, in that circumstance. It just felt at home to me. You know, and when I left there, I told An Ani Zanabel, who's the leader of MPV, that when I came back the next year, I'd bring her a report of MPV Columbus. You know, and so I went home and I sat about organizing Muslim progressive values in Columbus. Uh, we had some success. Uh, uh, the most people we ever had for Friday prayer was six. Uh, very often, it was just me and my wife. Uh, sometimes my wife and I and some, some younger person, some other person. Uh, I persisted for, well, well, up until just a year or so ago. Uh, and I finally decided, you know, it's, there's no point now. If if there's to be an MPV Columbus, 
I'm obviously not the one to organize it because I've tried for seven or eight years and, and nothing has come of it. So there's no point in me pursuing it any further. Uh, with with just a little bit of encouragement, I'd pursue it again, you know, but it's not that encouragement's not forthcoming. Uh, I've concluded that I've, I've talked to a number of Muslim leaders around Columbus about homosexuality. And there are a number of people who who are willing to say that it isn't sinful, uh, that it's just a natural part of being human being for some people, but they're not willing to say it openly. You know, uh, the, the they would be so ostracized in their in their communities that they're just not willing to do it. Uh, so I've I've concluded that the people who who need MPV. Uh, who would be at home in in an MPV mosque aren't willing to come because it's too socially costly for them. And and the ones who who have really rejected Islam's mainstream Islam's uh, condemnation of homosexuality have also rejected Islam. You know, they don't need it. They don't need Juma. You know, so there's no audience. You know, so. But but that you know that's going to change. You know, uh, the majority of Muslims in America support gay marriage. So so there are there's a there's a large Muslim community in America that understands this issue. Yeah, that is just reluctant because the hardliners are so vociferous. But that dam is going to break. You know, that dam broke here in the states. You know. It just took a few years. Yeah, you know, up until just a few years ago, you know, homosexuality was aberrant. You know, and you, we couldn't even think about marriage. And 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 when that dam finally broke, it just spilled out. That's going to happen in American Islam or Western Islam too. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it seems like there's a, a very different situation in the UK and the US. In the US. Like you said, you have the situation now where in some places there's more Muslims who support gay marriage than evangelical Christians. So yes. even though, you know, the creeping Sharia, you know, crowd is always, you know, trying to rile up people against Muslims, it's actually the Christians who are being more bigoted in some places in the US now than Muslims. And well, that has that has to do with that has to do with the education level. With Most the what? fundamentalist Christians, education level. Mm -hmm. Most fundamentalist Christians are not well educated. Mm. Most profession, most there are a lot of professional Muslims in America that are very well educated. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. In, yeah, in the UK, in the UK, that's not the case. Yeah, unfortunately, in the UK, I think, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not the one to diagnose it, but there's obviously sort of ghettos there. There's large, there's large areas where everyone's Muslim, which is unfortunate. Should you know, you need to be. And I was listening to a podcast with Melissa Chen and Joe Rogan, where she said in in Singapore, it's it's engineered so that every every like neighborhood has a mix of the population that has like sixty percent mm. Chinese, ten percent Muslims, whatever the overall population is. So you don't never end up with like all of the you know you don't end up with ghettos basically, and I think that helps a lot because when you're mixing with other people, you you know it it helps the exchange of ideas and all that. Uh, when you have these uh, like all Muslim areas where, where everybody is wearing niqab and you know everybody speaks Urdu and it's like you've created a little mini Pakistan that's more Pakistani than Pakistan itself, and which is unfortunate, you know. Um, and I do th and and you know there's been a lot of trouble I think gay ex Muslims gays in general have had in the UK because there there's been people like I mean there's been schools where all of you must have heard you know they pulled all the kids out of school because they were trying to teach that gay you know being gay is okay stuff like that and um i think that is definitely going to be a challenge you know and it is a ch as as you you know you try it as well to sort of um deal with that i, I do think that you know one of my gay ex-muslim friends jimmy london told me that even in america you you'd find that they'd be okay with gay marriage but they'd be less okay with their own kids being gay so it hasn't quite got to the point where Oh, the yeah. accepting of their own children being gay, they're okay with gay marriage theoretically. It's just not their problem, you know. But when it comes to their families, then it's a whole different issue, you know. 
Well, it's, it's a difficult issue. You know, as, as children, we're all, we all find sex yucky as children. You know, ugh, you know? Yeah. that's our reaction. You know, well, most of us are straight. When we grow up, we have this attraction that makes us want to engage in those activities that we thought were yucky. Yeah. And we stop taking their yucky. Mm. But if we don't have attractions to men, you know, we don't engage in those activities. They, they still they still stay yucky. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't and I don't think people, you know, some people have never really thought about like putting themselves in a, in, in a gay person's shoes and to think about what would it be like if like, right. you know, everybody around you was saying you're not normal and this and that, whereas you have you literally have no choice. It's just what you are. And what do you do? Right? I mean, it's and it's it's such a silly thing to to make a big, you know, woo-ha about when it doesn't affect it doesn't hurt anybody. It's a personal decision. It's, it's you know, it's my life. It shouldn't affect you. If you don't if you don't like certain things, don't engage in them. But like, don't tell me not to because, you know, your lights end where my lights begin, you know. And so I you know, I'm glad that in the US it's it's got much better. And um, I hope that in the UK and everywhere else, it'll it'll get better as well. Um, you know, well, well, it, it's the, the Islamic world has suffered a lot of colonization and, and when, when the colonists come, you either adopt the colonists values or you reject them, you know, you're opposed to them. And if you're opposed to them, you go back to your traditional values and they become even more intense than they were before the colonists came. So, 